Wonderful. All right, we're going to get started today. I know people are still coming online. Please forgive me that we didn't have the option for you to be able to connect with all participants. So I'll quickly go through. Uh, Liz Lamb said, hi, it's Liz from Impact BC. Elizabeth uh, from First Nations Health Authority. Uh, Marnell Saunders is from Tofino. Colleen Lutman from Interior Health Rural PCS. Welcome, Colleen. Chris Johnson from Health Emergency Management BC. Um, Kim working in ERH. Sorry, what does ERH stand for? Elk River. Sorry, I was in a hurry. Eagle Ridge Hospital in Fort Moody. Eagle Ridge. Sorry, sorry, Eagle Ridge Hospital. Um, Liz Lamb just let me know that she couldn't send something to everyone, so thanks so much. Um, so everyone else looks like you can now send messages to to everyone on the on hmm. the list. So please go ahead and send your notes. So welcome. We're so thrilled to be here today. We can't. I can't believe that we're we're in September and we're in our final swing um, towards uh, Change Day BC. Um, it's really exciting to see things sort of ramp up, and um, we've got lots to update you on today. So a lot of content, and we've got three fabulous ambassadors that are joining us for the call today to give an update on what they've been working on. Um, so we're really exciting, excited for that. And as we move on, um, just wanted to let you all know that I got word from the ministry um, today um, that Change DBC will be officially declared um, by a BC government proclamation. So we actually will have October 15, 2015, officially declared Change DBC across the province. So we're really excited about that and, and excited to get going. That's our little update for the today. Um, as we get going, um, there's a few things we're going to do today. We're going to, I'm just going to quickly uh, do a little dovetail to another topic. And so we're going to talk uh, briefly about the call for abstracts for the quality forum. Uh, Robin's going to give a little update for Change ABC at a glance. And then uh, she and I are going to give you an update on what's on the horizon, transitioning into our ambassadors in action. So we look forward to talking about that today. So as I mentioned before, I'm Colleen. I'm from the Council. I believe on the line we also have Andy from the Council and Robin. Um, and other folks, I really welcome you to introduce yourselves in the chat box. So before we get started, I wanted to take a couple seconds just to do a little plug. So many of you on the call today have been involved in doing some really great work, whether it's work specifically relating to Change Day, um, we're going to hear about that from a few folks today, or other work you're doing um, relating to hours. And um, we just, I'm just going to maybe mute the lines right now. Let's give a second here. Um, so we're really excited about this right now. And so what we wanted to share is coming up, we have our quality forum. And for those of you who haven't attended it before, um, it's just a very fun interactive conference that we host February 24th to 26th. And today is the deadline for the call for abstracts. And so we're really excited about this coming up, um, that we're inviting folks to actually submit an abstract uh, for our upcoming quality forum conference. So what does submitting an abstract mean? Um, I guess the big thing is, is about anything that you've been working on. Have you been working to improve things? Have you been working to make care better? What sort of things have you been focusing on in the work you do that you could share with others across the province? And so if you've got something like that, we really encourage you to submit an abstract. And it's very easy. The step one is basically deciding you're going to submit an abstract and what topic you might want to cover. And then we invite you to choose a presentation style. So you can do a rapid fire presentation or a storyboard, or you can submit your abstract for both. And then all you need to do is submit your abstract, which is just 300 words. And you can go online to the Quality Forum website to be able to do that. So if anyone on the line today wants to do this, the deadline is today. I think it's at midnight. So if you want to make a, uh, submit an abstract for the Quality Forum, I just wanted to give one last little push and let you guys know that that is an opportunity to do that. And maybe I'll just unmute the lines in case anyone has any questions. Any questions at all today regarding that? Does anyone, just a quick show of hands, has anyone on the call already submitted an abstract of some sort for the forum that's coming up? Oh, we got a few. Catherine and Liz, great to see. Great. So any of you out there that are still interested, you still got a bit of time, so just a 300-word submission. And um, we look forward to um, seeing your information, if not we seeing you at the event. So moving on, I'm going to hand it over now to Robin to give a bit of an update on where we're at around Change Day. 
Sure. Thanks, Colleen. Are you able to make me presenter as well? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. So, hi, everyone. Um, we're excited to share this updated infographic with you today because we are getting up there with pledges and we're coming down to the final weeks of the campaign. So, um, this is kind of our change day at a glance numbers that you can see. So, as of today, we were just over 3,400 pledges, which is really exciting for us. Um, so, about 1,500 away, 16 ish. And um, really hoping that we could have a good, strong push towards the end here leading up to change day on October 15th to reach our goal of 5,000 pledges. So um, you can see at the top that with fewer than 40 days left, we're aiming for about 40 pledges a day. So any of uh, you that are hosting any events or um, collecting pledges in any way, definitely send those in to us and we can help you get them in. And we're really hoping to capture all of the pledges that are going on out there so that we can reach that goal. Um, we have over 245 ambassadors now, which is really exciting, and um, lots of competition going on in terms of the top locations and organizations for pledges. And again, just with the caveat that this is kind of our, our overall numbers as counted through people that entered where they're pledging from, um, but we do have a lot of anonymous pledges that come in too, and so this may not be completely reflective of the, the true numbers, but we're kind of able to track at least as best we can with what gets entered. So Fraser Health is currently in the lead with Island Health close behind, and um, as you can see Woodland Park Elementary is still up there from all of the work that Hannah and Catherine have been doing, and Northern Health, Interior Health, PHSA, and BCH are all on there. So. Um, slowly kind of working up our numbers. And um, just a shout out to the smaller organizations as well. We know that your pledges are equally important. Um, we're really happy to have those too. And this is just kind of one way to track everything that's coming in. But it certainly doesn't mean that the bigger your organization, the better. So just wanted to give you that quick kind of rundown of where we're at. You can see that we have over 50 partners now, so we're actually at 51, and it's getting really hard to see all of them on our uh, partners page. So this is a, a snapshot of all of the logos of our partners that we have so far, and we're still continuing to reach out to more and checking in with them on how we can best support them. So if we do have any partners on the call today and um, have anything in mind that we might be able to provide to you to help you with the last few weeks of the campaign, just let us know. Um, we're happy to kind of meet those needs as best we can as long as we know what they are. So so, um, again, just a really big thank you to, and many of our ambassadors, I think, are members of these organizations as well. So thank you, again, for all of the support. I think thank you is probably the most common word we've been using throughout this campaign, hey, Colleen? Um, it really is a, a group team effort. Um, so this is our, our little graph, and uh, we like to show this every month because it is fun to kind of see how the numbers are going up, and obviously we're continuing to climb. And um, the orange one is where we're at so far for September, and our green is our trend line, so what we're kind of aiming for to get to 5,000 by the middle of October. So our goal for September is to get pretty close to 4,000 pledges, thinking that our last two weeks of the campaign, once we hit October 1st, will probably be our biggest push, where we have the most momentum events happening and, and different people getting their pledges in. So kind of counting on that to continue to go up and uh, just gives you a little bit of a sense of where we're at. So aiming for that 39.13 mark in September. So um, we do have a few other things coming up and Colleen's going to talk about some of them, but um, I will give a quick uh, rundown of a few as well before I hand it back to Colleen. Um, so as you know, we've been tracking our CBC Hits the Road all summer, and um, we've had lots of really fun submissions coming in from Pizza in Naples and Whistler, the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, um, lots of local travel too, which is really great, the West Coast Trail and Change Day Hit the Beach in Greece, Iceland, Broken Island Group, so many more. And um, we've been collecting and tracking all of those pictures that have come in, and thank you to everyone who has taken the time to bring some of those materials on the road and send us your photos. It's been really fun for us, feeling like we're on vacation with you all summer. Um, so the contest closes this Friday, September 11th, and um, we have a panel of about 10 judges that we've pulled together to help determine the winners. So um, the top three winners will, as you, I think, probably remember, receive up to 10 pizzas for a local change day event. So um, keep an eye out for an announcement on that. It should be coming in the next couple of weeks. 
weeks. And um, again, just thanks for sending in those fun shots. In terms of the BC Healthcare Fitbit Club, so it's been a pretty long trek from Oakland over to New Zealand. It's about 10,000 kilometers, so we're still working on that, but we are getting close now. Um, I think the group is up to, well, I think, just over maybe 9,000 kilometers total. So we're nearing uh, New Zealand, and then we're going to continue on our trip around the world. So this has been kind of a, a fun little journey for us, and we're up to over 50 members in that group now. So it's still not too late to join if you want to sign up. Um, you just go to the stories page of changedaybc.ca, find a story about BC Healthcare Fitbit Club, and there's a little form in there that you can join. So um, that is still on the go, and we'll keep you posted on our next destination. And then finally, just a reminder on t-shirts. So you can still order a t-shirt if you haven't already. And um, we did offer a free one to all of our ambassadors and partners in this group. So uh, let us know if you're interested and you do still want one. We can also still order them um, if you need extra t-shirts for giveaway or something like that. They're $15 and you can order that through the resources page of our website. So this is Jesse from Safe Care BC uh, showing off his Change Day t-shirt. And um, yeah, we'll be putting another order in on September 18th. So let us know before then if, um, if you're interested in getting in on that. Thanks so much, uh, Robin. Thanks. Any questions about any of that? I kind of just flew through it all. But um, I think much of that probably is review, kind of just giving you an update on where things are at, things that have been running for most of the summer. Um, but are there any questions about either the Hit the Road campaign, Fitbit, or T-shirts? Um, it's Kim here at Eagle Ridge Hospital. I'm just wondering there's how you're keeping up the website um, for the accuracy for the days counting and the number of pledges in. I've been encouraging my staff to follow it through the website and you just said 40 days I think in your presentation and it says 35 on the website. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> our website is actually automated. So where you would go for the most up-to-date numbers would be on the website because that's going to track every pledge that comes in and our days left go down day by day. Our infographic is something that we create in a PDF based on that information. So because we need to create that ahead of the meeting and then insert it in the slides, it's not always going to be 100% accurate, but we do our best to kind of keep that as current as we can. Um, but it, because it's a manual update, it's not actually going to be probably down to the minute, but if you go to changedabc.ca, that's where you can find the most up-to-date information, and that should be accurate. Okay, thanks. Yeah, good and question. Just to add to that, we did notice that it seems to be on UK time, however, um, so we are getting that switched over. I had sent a note to our designer or developer last night to see what's going on there, because I noticed that the day kind of switches halfway through our day. So we want to make sure it aligns with our timing, and so we're all set for change day. Yes, and great point, Jennifer. Thank you for raising that in the comments. Um, that Just a reminder, if you do want to join the Fitbit group, you don't actually need a Fitbit. So if you use a different kind of device to track your steps, um, I'm not sure if you could do it without anything because that would involve a lot of attention to how many steps you're taking in a day. But if you have something else, a pedometer or anything that gives you a total distance or number of steps per day, you can actually join that group. You just create your login um, through Fitbit, join the group through the link that is in the story that I mentioned earlier, and then you can actually manually add your steps at the end of each day so that those steps count toward our overall total. Thank you for that reminder, Jennifer. Thanks so much. Yeah, Before I think Robin that's it for up, me, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Robin. Really appreciate you um, doing the update. Just to transition on, um, we're, we're, we've been doing a lot of thought about what would Change Day look like? And because Change Day is something that's happening everywhere, um, we, we wanted to introduce something called We Want to Crash Your Party. So um, being the party crashers that we are, we're like that, we thought we'd like to hear about what you have planned for Change Day BC. And we really want to hear what the plans are for all across the province. So if you have an event that you're planning for Change Day BC, we want to invite you to share that with us. We've got a website that you can follow, and Andy will pop that link up for you during the call today. Um, and also, um, you can just share with us either by email or via that link what you're planning for Change Day BC. 
Now, your Crash the Party event can be on October 15, 2015. We've had some that have come in that have actually been a couple days before or after change day. We're flexible. Um, but what we want to do is actually come and crash your party. So if you're having an event, we'd love to join you. And as much as possible, our entire council team is going to spread out across the province and join the events that are happening for Change Day. And we will not be showing up empty-handed. We promise to come with some prizes and some fun and some actions. So we really look forward to hearing about what your plans are for Change Day and getting out there across the province to join in your celebrations. Are there any questions about that one before I move on to our next item? As we're heading into the final six weeks of Change Day, um, we really wanted to profile the amazing pledges that have come in. Um, one of the things we've heard is that sometimes people aren't sure what to pledge. So we wanted to really showcase some of those pledges and really celebrate these amazing ideas that have come in. So for every day from now until Change Day, we will be profiling um, Change Day BC pledges on our Twitter feed, our Facebook page, and Instagram. We're also going to be getting this information up on our website soon, so keep posted for that. That will be coming. And we really welcome you to kind of see these and share these. And who knows, maybe your pledge is going to be one of the pledges that we profile, so keep an eye out for them. So those will be coming out every day, and we really welcome you to check them out. And also, if you see yours up there, we encourage you to spread it around and share it with others, and encourage them to make their pledge for Change Day. Um, the next thing was Seconds of Change. I had this great opportunity this summer to take a whole month off of work, and I went traveling during that time. And while I was away, I was able to use an app called One Second of Every Day. And what this app did is allowed me to capture little videos from every day of my trip and then compile a video of my favorite one seconds from throughout my holiday. And it, it kind of got us thinking, oh, how could we use this when we, when we look at Change Day? So because Change Day is happening everywhere across the province, we want to capture a few seconds of change. And so we're not officially launching this until next week, so watch for the instructions. They'll be coming out. But we're so excited about this um, because we really want to see what Change Day BC has looked like across the province. So we're inviting you to capture a little bit of video um, just using your smartphone. Um, we've given you a little bit of instructions to hold it in landscape orientation. And just grab a few seconds. When you're doing something relating to Change Day, um, just take a couple seconds and grab a video. And we'd love to see what's happening so that we can really showcase this. So we're inviting you to capture these seconds of change and then send them to us anytime between now and October 22nd. And what we're going to do is pull it all together in a video to celebrate what Change Day is all about. Wonderful. So um, just a quick question. We had a quick question on the list about our abstract submissions. So I'll quickly answer that right now. To confirm, it does close at midnight tonight. And so abstract submissions for the Quality Forum is tonight. Um, any questions about our seconds of change? Moving right along, then. We'll get right into your presentations rather than us talking to you. Um, so the last thing is we heard from some of our partners that in the final weeks leading up to Change Day, they wanted a little bit of a checklist, so something that they could use to kind of give them ideas on different things they can do as we ramp into the final days, uh, 37 days um, leading up to Change Day. We're really excited about this, and so we wanted to give some ideas to folks. And so um, this checklist went out to all of our Change Day BC formal partners this week, and it's also available on our website on the Partners page, so if you want to download a copy for yourself, it's available there. And it just provides some tips and suggestions of things you could do between now and change day. So we're really excited about it. And um, just providing a bit more information for you at the request of our partners. So check out the checklist if you're looking for some ideas. Um, also just got a note that from Jennifer Sita in Interior Health saying she thought seconds of change was a cool idea and she's going to see what she can put together. So we look forward to seeing that, Jennifer. Um, thank you so much. All right, before I switch into ambassadors um, in action, are there any questions or comments about some of the things that we've got planned leading up to, the, to Change Day itself? All right, I'm going to move along then. So it's with pleasure today that we have three of our ambassadors sharing some of the work they've been doing across the province. We have Shelley Lynn Gardner from Fraser Health, Zainab Dista from Northern Health, 
and Chris Johnson from Island Health Health Emergency Management BC. So I'm really delighted to hand it over first to Shelley Lynn. Um, Shelley Lynn is a rehabilitation assistant um, patient safety, with patient safety support at Surrey Memorial Hospital Emergency Department. She's been doing some really amazing stuff and I, I got to see some of her, her work um, via social media and so thanks for sharing what you were doing Shelley, it really gave Shelley Lynn, it gave us a chance to see what's happening. So I'm going to hand it over to you now to give a little bit of an update of some of the work you've been doing for Change Day. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so Surrey Memorial is quite a big um, city onto its own and very, very busy. But um, we've had some really, uh, a lot of fun. We've got our engagement ambassadors here that um, our radicals have decided to get together and promote Change Day because we felt it was important. So if you go to the next slide. So what we did here is we hosted an event over two different days in two different locations. Because our campus is so large and with the new tower, we realize that some people that work in the tower don't visit the other side and some people that work on the other side don't visit the tower side. So we had it in two different days, two different days apart, and we invited um, a lot of our engagement radicals to come out and be cheerleaders and engage people in the conversation about, hey, have you heard about Change Day? Do you know what this is? And it was interesting because we're like, have you made a pledge? And people are like, no, no, I don't have no money. We're like, no, no, we don't want a money. We want a promise. That's all I want, a promise. So they came over and we had cookies and, and Hannah and her friend were kind enough to come out and decorate some homemade cupcakes and cookies. And everybody was dressed in orange. We had balloons. And, of course, you can see down in the, the corner there, my service dog, Kenna, was all dressed in his his orange as well. And of course, people see dogs and kids and cookies, and it's, it looks like a party. So it's been really, really, um, it was fun. We had some music that was playing in the background, you know, um, all about change and, and, and being happy, and it was really, really neat. And then we also had what's called an inspiration station. So, again, people are like, well, what do I, what do I pledge? What do I say? And we're like, oh, well, go have a look at what some of your colleagues said. And it was uh, a great way for people to go over and go, oh, hey, I, I like that idea. It was really, really neat. Um, and then we also had a gift basket draw. So if we couldn't quite convince them, it was like, hey, well, if you you know, make your pledge and put your phone number on the back, then we'll put you in the draw for this lovely gift basket. Of, there was um, coffee and a, a jacket and a, and a uh, uh, some candies and stuff in it so people – uh, made their pledge and they got to put their name in there and for the draw and it was really really neat because the lady who who won it was actually from the community she had come in to visit somebody and she's like oh this is really neat and she wrote a couple of pledges and her pledge was to smile every day at people so she wanted to make an effort to do that so it was really neat that we were bringing change day outside of our little organization into the community so that was really really neat um, so we can go to the next slide So our executive di director heard of this. She was on vacation. She's like, wow, that was awesome. She's like, I missed it. we got to do it again. So we tried it. It worked really well, and we're, we have two more days planned. So our two days that we've planned is September 15th, which is the one-month countdown, and then October 8th is the one week to go. And again, we're going to have it in two separate places. Um, on the campus. And the same rollout, we're going to do something very, very similar, cheerleaders, music, cookies, dogs, the whole shebang. And we've also invited um, Canadian Blood Services to come in and have a table beside us. We found a lot of people wanted to pledge to donate blood for that, uh, for their change day pledge. Um, and they're also doing their first responders blood drive through the month of September and October. So it kind of um, meshed very well with our Change Day BC. So if people come and they want to make a pledge to donate blood, they'll be able to actually go to the table next to us and book their appointment right there on the spot. So they'll be able to do that and find out more about the bone marrow registry. We need blood services just as much as they need us, so it seemed like a very uh, good mesh for those those two days. So um, you can see down in the left, that was a group pledge that was done by our social workers here on site. And of course, everybody wanted their picture with the dog because he's just so cute. Um, and then we've taken all of our pledges and we have a shadow box in the, one of the main walkways and we've put all of the pledges up. So it's really kind of neat. And yes, the dog did make a pledge as well and you can <laughs> kind of see his footprint down in the very corner. So. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we've we've been doing, and uh, we have got two more days coming up, and it's it's been great. We've had great support from uh, from our engagement radicals, and the site has been amazing to embrace 
uh, what we're doing, and it's just awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much, Shelley Lynn. I think it's really amazing what you've done. Um, I love how you've got a progression of events happening, and the, light, um, the shadow box that you got was really caught my eye. I thought that was very interesting. Love the use of music, etc. So so exciting to see this sort of ramp up. Um, there's some comments in the chat box here. Catherine O'Donnell was commenting on it as well and saying that the days were truly amazing. So kudos to you for your work on that. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, Does over those two days, we managed to get uh, 227 pledges in those two days. So that was great. Fantastic. That's amazing. That's really amazing. I think just setting up a table can be so powerful and having the conversation with folks. Mm -hmm. Does anyone mm -hmm. have any questions for Shelley Lynn about what she did? And moving her work forward. Have others on the call um, had any sort of similar event? Uh, it's Kim Beaudry at Eagle Ridge in Port Moody. Hi. I had my second uh, cookie pledge event, and I started to fill up my second wave. Uh, the next one is next Monday, and I'm thinking I will be able to fill the second wave and put them up in the main area of the hospital. So once that's done, I can send that in, and then the last two will be filled um, up the third wave, so we will have a total of an 18-foot wave down the main corridor of the hospital. So I'm still working on that uh, all by myself. Fantastic. So, um, I'm hopefully now that the summer is finished that my executive, this, the executive here at the hospital, will um, be more engaged. Oh, that's fantastic. We'd love to see pictures of your wave um, heading down the hallway. It sounds really great. And um, we'd love to hear more about it. Um, maybe you could talk to us at a future meeting. It just sounds fantastic. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Andy commented on your partnership with Canadian Blood Services is so awesome and such a great idea. I couldn't agree more. Um, but so it's really interesting to see this this coming forward. Jennifer Sita commented that they haven't done this, but they've got accreditation coming at IH. So once once that's done, they'll be doing more, and they love the blood donation idea. So lots of feedback in the chat box for you to see there, Kim. So really nicely done. I just think it's amazing. I know we actually happened to participate at an event. Um, Robin was there um, at Vancouver Coastal Health a couple months ago, and it was with the BC nurses. And just having that chance to just sit at a table and talk to people was so powerful in terms of raising awareness around change day and capturing those pledges. I think you've had a lot of creative ideas for doing this and really appreciate you sharing it. And just um, tremendous thanks for all of your work you've done spreading this. Any final comments? Um, before we finish up here for Shelley Lynn. Okay. Um, please, we're going to keep watching the, the chat box. And thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time, uh, Shelley Lynn. And please join us. Um, so the next one I really want to introduce is from Northern Health. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Zainab at a session we did up there a couple months ago, and she really took her pledge and put it into action. Um, Zainab is the Clinical Care Coordinator at Jubilee Lodge in Prince George, and I'm going to hand it over to her now to share what her pledge is all about and share some of her photos. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Prince George. <laughs> Greetings. All right. <clears throat> My pledge is, uh, is different from Shelley's because... My pledge is focused on my staff and family in appreciation and recognition for the extra effort they they render to to all our residents at Jubilee Lodge. Jubilee Lodge is um, is a licensed um, is a four bed residential care home in Northern Health in the Northern Health Authority, and it is a home to 66 residents. For the past few months since April, and even before this um, uh, workshop we did with Colleen, um, my staff has been, uh, you know, demotivated because of so many call-ins, and they've been so uh, working so hard covering shifts, working overtime, and so when um, I came across this pledge change day BC, I said, why don't I? Organize something for my staff that will, you know, that will motivate them and that will, um, you know, encourage them and acknowledge the service they render to, to our residents, despite of the fact that we are always 
having short dates because of call-ins, and, um, you know, our residents are happy, safe, and, you know, they are in a very warm environment. So I organized this one-day um, staff and family affair on July 18th, and I did it by myself. <laughs> A one-man show. I came here at 6 o'clock in the morning, decorated our patio deck, and um, put in, put balloons. And, uh, yeah, I made a banner from, I ordered a banner from DocuSource, which says, thank you for doing a great job. And, um, you know, ordered Chinese lunch. And for kids, I have uh, requested our... Um, Staff, one of our recreation staff, uh, to come on a Saturday to do some games and and face painting with kids. And if you see my shaving, this is this just looks nice and this <laughs> uh, with the Chinese food in it. And it was a whole day. It was a whole day affair from 11:30 to to 3:30 until the evening stuff came over and have their early dinner. And um, Everyone, it was well attended by, by different, um, from different uh, disciplines. Like I have the OT with her husband who came, housekeeping, kitchen, pharmacy, only the care staff and uh, the nurses, but everyone. So it was really well attended, though they come and go because some of them have other things to do this, this weekend. So, yeah, I was so pleased and everyone was happy, and uh, they felt a great satisfaction and great appreciation for what I did to them in acknowledging and recognizing their efforts and their good job. So yeah, so that's our deck, and I just invited our manager, Peter, the one there on the, the big guy. To, to see how it goes and to meet the rest of the family of the staff members. And it's nice, you know, meeting them all. So, yeah, those are kids doing a, 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 a contest. They had a contest of building a castle out of marshmallow. And, uh, yeah, there was even a dog, too. But, yeah, so this is... Um, one of the kind that they appreciated is that they've never had this before in their 30, 30 years working with, <laughs> at Jubilee Lodge. One of them told me and approached me to thank me. Maybe so, cool. yeah, any questions? <laughs> there, were no mu there was no music because, but there were just games with the kids and all. The playlist of Shelly was very nice. I should have done that. <laughs> but <laughs> believe me, I tried to hire people, you know, from, you know, I'm new in Prince George. I've been here for two years, uh, not even two years. So I called even to hire people, um, uh, you know, this music, to, to have some music around and, you know, because I love dancing. I love, I love, I like to, to come, uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you all right, Zainab? Yes, I'm fine. Any questions? That's wonderful. <laughs> We're so delighted. It's just amazing to see this event. And, you know, I think um, um, it, it was really nice to hear about your pledge and then to get your pictures and see it in action. It's just so brilliant to see. And do you, I think just huge, you know, compliments to you for pulling this together. I'm, I'm curious, do you think you'll do one again, Zainab? Oh, God, yes, I can do it again. <laughs> Wonderful. It, um, so it just sounds like it was so well received. Now there's a bunch of uh, wonderful comments here in the chat box, and and one comment from Jennifer Cito said it sounds like this event needs to happen a little more often. Um, Shelley Lynn Gardner said you did an amazing thing. You made an impact, and they will remember. Great idea. Oh, um, thank you. Audrey said Shelley Lynn, kudos for your pledges filling the shadow box. Oh, that's another one for Shelley Lynn. So just some great feedback for for both um, Zainab and Shelley Lynn today. So thank you so much, everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Colleen, for the, for the encouragement and for the, you know, that workshop really helped me, you know, uh, making a pledge to do this. Oh, that's great to hear, Zainab. We're so delighted. It's so lovely to see it in action. Does anyone have any questions for Zainab to hear how she pulled this together or put her pledge into action?
But we've got our chat box here, so if anyone has any questions, we can always read them out in a few minutes. I just wanted to thank you so much, Dana, for joining us today, for sharing what you did to put your pledge in action. And these photos are great and so heartwarming. I love the pictures of the kids getting there, doing their activities, and it's just wonderful to see. So thank you so much. I'm going to hand it out now over to our next ambassador. Um, our ambassador today is, is Chris Johnson from um, Health Emergency Management BC in Vancouver Island, or Island Health. And I'm really delighted to hand it over to her to share some of the things they've been doing around Change Day BC, which happens to land on the same day as the Great British Columbia Shakeout. So I'll hand it over to you now, Chris. Thanks very much. Um, so I'm from Health Emergency Management BC. And first of all, for anybody who's not familiar with uh, HMBC as it's called, it's a program of the Provincial Health Services Authority. And what we do is we support the health authorities across the province in achieving a better state of preparedness. So things like uh, major disasters, trans transportation disasters, earthquakes, all of that kind of thing, where they need some support in, in terms of developing their disaster response plans, uh, developing emergency code responses, that kind of thing. Um, that's what we're involved in. Uh, lots of people don't know we exist. We're a very small team, and we're structured in a way that uh, small groups are embedded within individual health authorities, so we're, we're quite widely dispersed across the province. ShakeOut is obviously our, one of our big events of the year. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to, to talk uh, more broadly about things we can do to prepare, and the more prepared health authorities become for major events, um, the better able to handle smaller events they are on a, on a local scale. So ShakeOut's a really good opportunity for us to get people to, to exercise and drill what they would do in a major event. So a couple of months ago, which was when we became aware of, of Change Day, we, we kind of had a, an hour of, of uh, hair pulling and consternation thinking, well, what's going to happen because now ShakeOut's going to vie with Change Day um, and we're going to lose some focus and some impetus around the ShakeOut event. And then we sat down as a team and we thought, well, you know, what does Change Day mean for us and, and what could it mean for us? And what it really came out was that Change Day itself was a huge driver for us for ShakeOut because the more we committed to make change happen across the province, the more successful ShakeOut could be. And there was just as much need for a change in the way ShakeOut was developed uh, as there was in, in all other parts of healthcare. Um, so instead of fighting or tying or competing, we thought let's tie the two things together because that makes most sense for us and because resources are so scarce within the health authorities, the more we can do to, to join forces when we launch these initiatives, the better it is for everybody. So from our perspective, we think about uh, awareness first because the more we can raise awareness at a, at a personal level, uh, and individual level, the more we can uh, encourage people to prepare uh, for themselves and for their families. And the reason that's important is, is because every member of staff who's prepared to support their family in an emergency is another member of staff who feels comfortable about coming to work in a disaster. And then we help teams and units to develop their disaster response plans because in an emergency, they'll function more effectively if they've already been through that process of thinking, what do we do now? What do we do when we're missing the network? Or what do we do when we're out of power? What do we do when we're short of water? All of those kinds of things have a factor on how we provide care. And that, in turn, enables us to actually serve the communities that we serve on a day-to-day -day basis throughout a period of disaster. So everything we do is geared towards preparing people to continue caring in an emergency situation. So when we each as, a, as a, an individual, we sat down and we decided what we would pledge to do, it wasn't surprising to us when it came back that all of those pledges were very, very similar. Um, Brent said that he would walk the walk and he'd, he'd update his own kit. That made great sense. It was helping prepare the, his family. Um, Danica, she had a, a pledge uh, to make sure that her family was prepared. Um, and to also encourage her surrounding communities, she's very involved in the communities that she lives in, uh, that's in the north of the island, to encourage them to prepare as well. Um, and mine was to seize every opportunity to connect with others because, unfortunately, 
Um, being an introvert, that's quite difficult for me. Uh, so I thought, well, there, here's an opportunity to actually go out and make more connections to help raise awareness of what we can do and how preparedness will actually serve that, that, uh, that quality of care during an emergency. And our director, uh, Jerry, he pledged to help family and friends make their emergency kits so that they could be prepared as well. So all very similar on a theme, possibly not that surprising because that's the kind of thing we do on a day-to-day -day basis. But then we thought, how are we going to incorporate that into what we do? So we signed up for uh, Pledge Day and we got some of the resources and we distributed them across the island. And because there's already a very active uh, change day committee, we thought, well, what can we do in the course of, of the, the normal activities that we engage in. So every month, for example, uh, we host orientation sessions for our emergency operation centers, and we have people at different levels of the organization come in, spend an hour or two with us, walk through what an emergency operations center is for and what happens when it's activated. And into those sessions, we incorporated all of the materials that were provided by uh, Change Day BC to make people aware of the event, to make people aware of uh, the fact that they could become involved and also the fact that it was also occurring on ShakeOut um, so that they knew that one event should not eclipse the other, that they could get involved in both and we would support them with both. So we've had a lot of feedback from people that we've connected with through the orientations, also through one-to-one uh, -one coaching sessions and uh, through plan development sessions. Um, and so they've come back to us and said, so what can we do in terms of pledging? Um, in addition to daily pledges, what can we do around preparedness? And that's been really, uh, really good for us because we haven't asked them to pledge around preparedness, but they've kind of seized that initiative. And so we've had teams come back to us and say, well, this is what we're doing. And so one of the things that we're going to launch next week is we've done uh, a couple of podcasts with different teams talking about what their pledges uh, and how they're affecting what they're doing in their units. And so they're not entirely about preparedness, although sometimes there's an element of that. And so we've uh, committed to get their message out across Island Health. Um, they will actually be hosted on our internal intranet pages. And we've uh, launched an intranet page that also connects with our change day uh, committee, and it carries also that countdown ticker to October 15th, but it also has a whole range of resources around both change day and shake out so that people can see how they how they gel together and we've had quite a good response to that already and one of the things that that came home to me personally was that having committed to make those connections um, and to uh, to get out there into the organization and meet as many people as possible um, I was actually then taken off my feet um, by a sudden illness and ended up as a a somewhat reluctant uh, patient of our Royal Jubilee Hospital. Um, I'd never been in hospital before in Canada, so it was, it was a completely new experience for me. But one of the things that, that hit me almost immediately was that the team on the ward where I was a patient were absolutely buzzing about change day. They had uh, displays at the entryway to the ward. They were talking about it to new members of staff while I was there. They were answering questions from patients who were asking what the what the signs were for, what the the pledge cards was, were for, and they were all very very involved in the the whole change day experience. And it was really wonderful to see that in action and have an opportunity to actually talk with some of our clinical staff in the course of their daily business, caring for patients who were actually both living this experience and sharing that experience with patients and other staff and visitors. Um, so I was very keen to, to be on the call today because I wanted to make people aware of that end of the experience, that it is actually touching people's lives uh, and it is making quite a phenomenal difference, I think, um, both in the, the quality of care that, that we're providing and the quality of, of satisfaction that we have from the work that we're doing. And so I think that's all I've got for you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you so much. I think it's amazing to hear what you've done and, and how you've integrated the two, but still really left it open as well for Change Day. Um, 
I'm really excited about how you've been able to spread it through those different initiatives. I, I mentioned in the, in the chat box, I'm so sorry to hear that you've been in hospital, um, but I'm really delighted to hear that there was a buzz about actions and making our, our systems better. And um, just, uh, it's really fascinating to see how this has come together for you and, and to hear more about that. So thank you so much for sharing that, Chris. Um, do folks on the call have any questions for Chris? Quiet on the line is a sign that we don't have any questions. We've got a quiet gang today. Um, really appreciate you joining us, Chris, and, and sharing um, your perspective and how this has come together. And the ability to sort of integrate this work, I think, is just really fascinating. And there's so many pieces of what at least I've heard today that I feel like we can steal shamelessly from as well and, and take back and share with others. So. I do want to just take a couple minutes to say thank you so much again to Shelley, Lynn, uh, Zainab, and Chris for joining us today. Um, I know you're all very busy and taking the time to throw together some slides and share your photos and, and, and join us. We just really appreciate your experience and what you're doing out there. And I think um, to everyone on the call to take the time for joining us. Um, that's all we had for our call today. So that was the end of the call. Is there any sort of final questions before we wrap up today? Um, Got a little email there, and any questions today? Just seeing some feedback coming in the chat box from Shelly Lynn. She said this is a great perspective and stepping back, and Catherine as well. Just kudos for your efforts, um, Chris. So thanks for sharing that. So our next meeting is going to be October 7, 2015. Oh, was there a question? Yes, it's Catherine. I just wanted to um, find out the last date people can pledge and whether you'll communicate this. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a very good question. We're not going to close it down. I know in Saskatchewan they had their pledges open until the end of the month. Um, so we'll, we'll have to finalize that, but for sure people will still be able to enter pledges and we'll get a date and communicate that out to folks. I do believe in our, in our, in our. I'll have to go back and check, but in our privacy impact assessment, we had said we'd be collecting until the end of the month, but technically October 15th at the end of the day. Um, but thanks, Catherine. We'll make sure we communicate that out in our next newsletter with a firm date so everyone knows what that is. Our next meeting is October 7th at noon, which will be just a little, one day more than a week before change day. And um, love that everyone took the time to join us today. And any other questions? That's a great question, Catherine. Anything else from folks? And I think we're all done. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks for your ideas. And keep it up. If you have anything um, you want to share for the next meeting, please just send us your name. We'd love to have you present at our next call. Bye-bye.